Folding the paper into sections and sewing them together with a needle and thread has been the basis on which books have been made since ancient times. This sheet of paper, The Art of the Book, will make a one-section binding, also known as a pamphlet or single-section binding. If you are following this exercise with blank paper, make sure the sheet is short-grained. That is, the grain of the paper is running with the short edge of the sheet. You can see this for yourself by testing in which direction there is greater resistance to bending. Stage 1. Folding the text. Myla McCall is now going to take us through this exercise. So we're going to take this flat sheet and turn it into our folded section. Um, to do that you're going to find page number 7 which has got all the folding instructions on it. Um, and it's important to read that through first because when you start folding that will actually be hidden. Um, and we've, we've put these little markers on the pages so that you can line up where, where your folds go. So we've got an asterisk that's going to meet an asterisk and then on the other side we've got a dagger that's going to meet a dagger. Um, so first thing to do is get your asterisk folded over, nice and neat, corner to corner, so those two asterisks meet. Mylan folds the paper in half again this time with the daggers meeting, so that page 4 is facing page 5. With a broad-faced knife, she slits along the second fold to just beyond the halfway mark. This will prevent the paper creasing when the paper is folded a third time. Finally, the sheet is folded again, so that page 8 faces page 9. The instructions continue on page 8, which is now in the centre of the folded booklet. So our flat sheet is now starting to look like a book. Stage two, attaching the end papers. Um, before we do the sewing, we're going to apply our end papers around the outside. In our booklet here, it says we're gonna take one folded sheet. I'm gonna just add an additional sheet so that we've got an extra leaf of coloured paper on either side but the principle is exactly the same. So we're going to take one folded sheet and wrap it around the outside. And of course the grain direction of this um, paper is running with the spine. And I'm gonna just take a second sheet and pop that around as well. We're also going to apply a spine lining. This is a piece of mull and it's gonna overlap onto the end papers by about 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch and that's just going to come around the outside here and it sits just short of the, the overall length. A good tip is to keep the end papers and mull in place with two paper clips. Stage 3 Sewing and Trimming Okay, so now we're going to pre-make the holes ready for our sewing. Mylan prepares the book for sewing by using her bodkin to make three holes in the centre fold between pages 8 and 9. The positions are marked with three red crosses. If working with blank paper, place one hole in the middle and the other two evenly spaced on either side. That centre pull it round and then push through until it comes right out on the centre of the spine and the third hole exactly the same so I'm sort of twisting and wriggling pushing it through okay so now we're going to do the sewing so I've got my needle and thread ready here I'm going to start in the middle hole coming in from the middle out onto the spine and we're going to leave enough that we can tie a knot with so a few centimetres we're going to come down to the next hole Hold that and then we're going to go back into the middle hole and just making sure you're not threading through this thread so just coming through next to the original thread pulling that tight and into the third hole. 
To complete the sewing, Mylan tightens the sewing by pulling the ends of the thread together and tying them together in a double knot. Take care to position the knot over the centre hole. The ends can now be trimmed off with 10 millimetres to spare. With the point of a bone folder, press the knot down into the centre hole. This will help conceal the knot and prevent it from undoing. She now removes the paper clips. By flicking through the margins of the paper, Mylan first determines how far in the text block she has to trim to obtain a nice clean cut. And you'll find that where we folded it, there's probably a, a slight discrepancy of where the pages um, stop here. So we want to cut a nice straight line. Using the squares in her cutting mat to line up her book is an easy way to ensure she keeps her book square when trimming the edges. She uses an aluminium safety rule and a sharp scalpel knife to trim the edge by making a series of shallow cuts. Be careful not to press too hard with a knife and always use a safety rule when cutting materials in this way. We're then going to do exactly the same on the head and the tail. So again, I'm just going to sort of lift up my, uh, my end paper, find that dotted line, pop a little pencil mark as a guide for me, and then using the grids on the mat to help me find a nice square. By turning the book over, Mylan repeats the same process on the bottom edge to complete the trimming process. By flicking through the text, she is able to check that she is happy that the book block is trimmed evenly and the three edges are all square. Finally, she trims up the mull by cutting the end of it at an angle and she is now ready to move on to the next stage of making the cover. In part three, Mylan completes the binding by making a cover in book cloth and decorative paper. You will find more information on the tools and materials on our website.